Welcome to the Dirt Time channel. I'm Alan Halcon. Change your hat. Wow, already starting. Already. This, is dude, this is dude McLean. I'm Christopher Nyergesh. <laughs> and today, dude's going to tell me how to dress. Again, it's a drill instructor hat, right? You know, yeah, it's his a mother isn't here. It's a campaign hat for a traditional reason today. Okay. Well, why don't you start? Now that you've uh, done that, why don't you segue into what you're talking about? Okay, well, uh, what we have here are some different forms of light for your camp. And uh, uh, we'll start with this. This is a candle lantern, obviously. This is a stone bridge lantern. And uh, this is very traditional early 1900s camping. It was used extensively, and one of the reasons that it was well liked is that it folds down. And was Stonebridge the company that... Stonebridge uh, is the company, and there's the, whoever owns it now owns the name Stonebridge, and you can still get these today. As a matter of fact, I think you can get those from John McCann. I'm not sure. No, as a matter of fact, you absolutely can. Absolutely yeah. can. You can get from them from John McCann. Survival Resources. Survival uh, Resources. I used to have a cheap knockoff on these, yeah. but this one is really nice. This is yeah, all this, brass, right? It's all brass. Yeah, it's real, they're really great. Uh, this comes from the, about the 15th century, the idea of it. And this is just a reproduction, obviously. But this makes a great uh, light in your camp as well. It looks um, like you'd see it in a castle or something. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what yeah. I was thinking. Yeah, what's neat about it, and, and when it's absolutely dark and there's no ambient light anywhere, this works extremely well. So it was designed to be hung and hung from the top or from yeah. the back, right? And you, yes, exactly. You can take and hang it some, on a tree trunk or whatever mm -hmm. like this, and it's fine. I like that Excellent. One. Yeah, That's that very cool. Well. Keep it in mind when Christmas um, is coming up, dude. Gives you okay. a reason to carry some nails <laughs> in your pack when you go camping. Yeah. Hang that on a tree. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is more of a traditional lantern that you know today. This is not the electric that's one. That's modern traditional. Modern traditional. This is. A, I coined that. That's uh, my okay, word. That's a Halcon term. That is yeah, my modern term. traditional. This, this has a pump, all right. And we also are familiar with the ones that are the electric, and you, and you can light them that way. These are really, really bright, and they make a big hissing noise that I personally don't like. And you have to replace the mantle from time to time. The mantles are actually very fragile. Mm -hmm. They break really yeah. easy. Mm -hmm. And I don't like that. My favorite lanterns of all are the Dietz lanterns. And this is called the Little Wizard. This gives you a nice light in your camp. It does not ruin your night vision. This will last, when you fill this little tank up right here, it will burn for 45 hours. Really? So if you are... On a single wick. On a single wick. And 45 the really, hours from four, one full? That's right. Interesting. 45 hours. So if I was going to be someplace for a week, I wouldn't have to take any other fuel with me other than what's in this. And it does burn other fuels other than the lamp oil. I mean, you can burn citronella oil and all yes. that to keep the mosquitoes at bay. Yes, and yeah, that always works really well. I smoke a cigar to keep them away, but... What if you had um, just like vegetable or olive oil? Would that work? Uh, probably not as well. I see. It'll probably work. But uh, um, I don't know. And if you don't like the smell of kerosene, take a little two drops or so of vanilla, oil of vanilla, uh -huh. and drop in there, and it'll smell like vanilla, and you'll be looking for ice cream. Where yep. can we get one of those, dude? Uh, these are all over the Internet. Okay. Uh, Dietz, by the way, was one of the first companies that moved to China. They moved to Hong Kong in 1950 or 51. Survival Resources again. Survival Resources. Yes, they, have yes, they do, absolutely. Well, I think that the little wizard right here is probably one of the best buys you can do for these. And it does not ruin your night vision the way these lights do when they're so bright. Mm -hmm. This keeps your night vision going, so you're not going to lose that. Mm -hmm. You know, for those of you that do not know, these lamps over here, the one we called modern traditional, these things are extremely loud. It really does it ruin. Yeah. It, it really does ruin a, a good no camping trip. There's no noise the deets at all. There's nothing. No noise whatsoever. Yeah. These things drive me nuts. When I'm in a nice, quiet camp, I don't want to hear this thing hissing. Yeah. You know, and it's just it's just very distractful. I can many times, depending on where I'm camp, I've kept one of these going all night. I'm the lowest flame. You can bring it way down, and so you can wake up. So I'm not scared at night. Because, you know, you'd be, a, you'd be in a scared fellow. I'm in a scared personality. <laughs> yeah. you, your personality scares us. <laughs> yeah, so you're that. a very frightening and dangerous individual. <laughs> you don't have much to worry it. about. I don't you know about dangerous. <laughs> no, is this like something that, that Santa dude here is, is not dangerous. Is this something that you invented, Alan? <clears throat> here we're going we're gonna to go with it. This, 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 this guy right here. No, actually, this is a variation of a slush lamp. Yes, I'm going to throw that Spain story. When I was growing up, them back in them their days and whatnot, this was a lamp that 
used to be very commonly burned in that Spain. You just wandered the hills of Spain. I and wandered the, the back land. hills. The open back of Spain. Yeah, the open back. You would go the, out for weeks wow. at a time with just a little bag of stuff? At many times, and I was only six years old when I was doing that. Really, barefoot? Yeah. Probably? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uphill both ways in the snow. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's good to know. Anyway, all That's this is... That's why he's in the position he's in. Well, and it's on. not a very good position, I assure you. <laughs> So it's a little. What is this jar? Just like a, okay. So you, this is you, a jar. You, you, what we have you here took is we an old have face cream jar. You use no, face Christopher. Cream jar? This is like like pimentos or something okay, like that. Okay. I stole it from the kitchen. Okay, I don't right. know what it was. Okay, this it, looks, does, it doesn't even matter. It, looks like it could have, be a glass. Okay, so a little glass. It's not your face cream jar, and you've got oil and what in there? Water? We have water here, and then we have oil. Water and oil don't mix. The oil flows to the top because the water is heavier. Then what I did, because I drink a lot of wine. I guess I did just admit that on TV, but that's okay. I took a cork and I cut. You I do cut drink a, a lot of wine? No, I just said that just oh, for the okay. sake of the viewers. Good, I'm just checking. Yes, I do. Because we're concerned about your health. No, it's, I yeah. do drink a lot of wine. Okay. Anyway, so I took a cork from one of the wine bottles that I have. Notice how I said one of, meaning many. Okay, carry on. And I cut a piece off to create a disc. I punched a hole in it with a twig, took a piece of jute, that's ran it through that's and that's all it is and then i just clever. dropped it in there Here's just this is the jute, jute and we talked about yeah. jute the other day then i just dropped it in drop the whole disc in there it floats on the oil light it and now you have a slush lamp that is and great. it will continue to burn until it hits the water and this then once it hits the water it extinguishes now the one thing to keep in mind some people will say well you know you should really protect the cork with some aluminum foil or whatnot because the cork is going to burn rubbish that the cork, cork will that, not burn that cork's not burning that cork is not burning yeah and that's been lit for at least five eight five to eight minutes before about we nine minutes yeah. yeah yeah about nine minutes now dude. what you can do what the cork will do is eventually it will start to get hot so you know you might want to put a piece of aluminum foil over the top just as a heat protector or take a tin can cut a disc out put a slit in and just slide it across the wick and use that as a heat protector but but if you're out somewhere and you have oil you could take a bit of bark from an oak tree or something and get some twine in your pack. You, you may not have tinfoil, but I mean, this is very ingenious. I like this. Christopher, you can even use a piece of a napkin as a wick. Right, right. So it doesn't have to be jute. I just happen to carry jute, and it's what I like to use, and mm -hmm. that's all it is. That's good. So you could take a cotton shirt, if you had a cotton shirt or, or, a, anything. or a, a scarf. and Anything that will that. create a wick. I bet guys in prison could make this to heat, uh, heat their coffee. Yeah, or there. Well, I don't know. You guys would know more than I would <clears throat> about that. Uh. Don't let him lie to you, folks. He's been there more than once. <laughs> Moving right along. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. Once again, I'm Alan Halcon, Christopher Neerges, Dude McLean, DirtTime.com.